evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Coaster Net Update. We've got some breaking news out of West Mifflin, Pennsylvania, where finally, after weeks of speculation, we finally have the answer to what is Project 412, what is going to Kennywood uh, for 2019, and Danny, it is... Surprise! The Steel Curtain Roller Coaster. Now, um, on the last show... Um, you know, we gave our official guesses as to how we thought the numbers matched up. Um, and Danny, I don't think we did too shabby here. We didn't. No, wait. we we had everything except for we switched two of them. Yeah. So which, so we, we, which were, we feared might be a thing, although we thought we had it the way we had it ordered, but we were backwards. So um, so the steel curtain is uh, a, a sit down roller coaster. It is an inverting roller coaster. Uh, it is made by SNS, which was I think the most surprising part of this announcement that when they brought yeah. uh, uh, the gentleman out from SNS, I think that took a lot of people by surprise. Now uh, we knew that a lot of people were rumoring, you know, SNS like air launch. Wasn't that it was not an no. air launch. Uh, it, this is a standard uh, looping roller coaster. It's going to take a few records. One of them I kind of dispute whether it's a record or not. Well, it's a record. Well, it is a record, but it's a dumb record, I think. Yeah. So, I, mean, so it, I mean, what they're claiming is technically true, but... So the three records are tallest inversion, which I think is going to be impressive. Uh, so you're going to come off that lift hill and do a little uh, swirl around and, and do a little dippity doo -dah. Um <laughs> A barrel roll, Andy? A barrel kind of? roll, a dippity doo -dah is what I call it. Um, okay. So... <laughs> do a dippity doo -dah. Okay. Uh, the the yeah. second record is nine inversions, which will be a North American record, not a world record, because we know things like Smiler goes, you know, 14 times upside down. Yeah. Uh, this is going to be nine, a North American record. And then the last record is 220 feet is the tallest coaster in Pennsylvania. Um, I guess. Uh, I, technically. By a few, yeah. Because like, yeah, yeah, Steel Force is what like two something. Two hundred with a two hundred five drop. Sky Rush is two hundred. Yeah. So two twenty uh, is the tallest coaster in Pennsylvania. Wait, now, now I had to point this out. I mentioned this on Twitter. So yes, height two twenty. Yes, but another coaster in the same park has a drop that's two hundred and thirty two feet. So I mean, tallest technically, yes. Because the Phantom's Revenge second drop goes down into the ravine, but boy, oh boy, you, and that's a good question because because you're really skirting your way to kind of a bogus record here. <laughs> because because when you think about it, if I'm in the front row and I crest that hill and I'm about to go down, aren't I technically 230 feet high up? <laughs> <laughs> Like, eh. Eh. I mean that. I was really, I was really hoping that the the first two I have no pride. The tallest inversion, most inversion yeah. in North America. I'm I'm cool with. I'm cool with doing stuff like that. Uh, most inversions in North America, tallest inversion in the world is what they're saying. I'm completely cool with both of those. I would have hoped that at least one of them was a U.S. That the last one would have been at least like a U.S. record or North American record. But yeah, and I, I don't know where that would have come from. Um, I, I don't think you could have gotten one out, out of this coaster, and you know, with, with the way it's laid out. Uh, but anywho, uh, so what? What is your initial reaction to this ride? Um, I, I know there's a lot of question marks on it still. There's a lot of question marks. Um, let me throw a few question marks out there. One, the track looks different than other SNS coasters we've seen built recently. Um, it the, looks like, and it looks an awful lot like some of those Vacoma coasters we've been talking about. And, and we, we know that Vacoma and SNS, uh, that SNS just bought out Vacoma. I, I, I'm not going to go out here and say that Vacoma is going to have any hand in this whatsoever. I don't think they will, but I wouldn't be surprised if they do either. So I, you know, and I, I, I don't know, because it doesn't make sense to me to have one company offering two different models of roller coasters. Like, come on guys, this isn't a car company. This isn't like, you know, or, or like a store with Banana Republic in the Gap and, and Old Navy. Like, are, are we really marketing coasters like that now? Like, I, I don't think so. But why have two companies compete with each other under the same umbrella? I don't understand that. Um, who knows? And, and 
I, I, I don't know. So that's, that's one big question mark is, is who's involved in making this? Is this SNS? Is this going to be as rough or as problem plagued as other SNS coasters have been as of late? Hopefully not. Yeah. Um, but that all being said, I think there's a lot of potential here for this to be a really nice ride. Absolutely. Um, you know, we talk on this show a lot about rides like Monster, and I talk about Smiler, and, um, you know, we talk about rides like that, and even Cannibal to a point, and uh, we've discussed Hang Time a little bit. Um, this, to me, looks like it should be a Gershlauer ride. Um, it looks like it should be a giant infinity coaster, which is what we were going after all along from the start. Um, until well, it's be we made because, our because that's what the park needed. The park needed a looping coaster, and it would make sense to hit some sort of record off of that. Yeah, they needed a big signature looping coaster, and we argued that the inverted coaster uh, or the suspended, you know, looping coaster would um, even fit that bill even better because it put uh, it kind of had a seating arrangement that wasn't seen in the park before, but. You know, Kennywood is tip is a bit more traditional. Um, so, you know, maybe not surprised that they did a traditional sit-down type of ride. Um, but this does kind of fit and fill a gap that they needed um, with the big sit-down looping coaster. Skyrocket is a is the launch coaster. It's a smaller coaster. Um, only has two inversions, I believe. So, I mean, there's not, there's not a ton uh, to get excited about there, really. Um, you know, this is the big signature looping coaster that a lot of parks have that Kennywood has always not had, um, you know, say, except for maybe the old days of the steel phantom before phantoms revenge, but you know, that's, you know, that's almost two decades gone now. Yeah. Um, so I, I think this is a really good fit. Um, the ride itself actually looks like it could be quite good as well. Um, there's a lot of potential here. Um, if this ride was being made by a Gershlauer and was an infinity coaster or was even like an Intamin or even dare I say, an RMC T-Rex, I think there would be more certainty that it was going to be a really good ride because we know what those companies can do in a package such as this. Um, we've seen the big RMCs before in both wood coaster form and steel coaster form that have wacky inversions like this. Uh, some of the inversions like, uh, you know, that stall loop towards the end and the dive loop, we've yeah. seen elements similar to that on RMC coasters. Um, Intamin has done uh, quite a few large looping coasters, um, rides like Colossus over at Thorpe Park, the multi-inversion uh, coasters. Um, certainly things like that in their resume. Uh, resume. Uh, Gershlauer, I think most recently has, with rides like Smiler and Monster and Hang Time and uh, for Descarnen, uh in terms of a ride of this size, you know, that ride's 235 feet tall, 215 foot drop. Uh, Gershlauer has certainly done at least a handful of rides of this size before uh, with multiple inversions. So there's a proven tra track record from th two or three different companies that could have done a ride like this. And then to go SNS puts a big question mark on it because now all of a sudden it could be very, very good, but I, I'm not as confident, especially given the recent history of SNS with rides like Merlin's Mayhem being delayed an entire year. That's a smaller ride that's pretty traditional. Um, a ride like Gale Force, which is non-traditional, still a smaller ride, opened a year late, and then had to be completely rebuilt after it finally did open because the track was so rough. Um, that, that really puts a big question mark because other than those two rides, the recent offerings from SNS are these free flies where the track is made by RMC anyways. So yeah. there's not a whole lot of recent history to go off of as far as SNS doing things successfully and without issues. So th those things combined make me think, I would be more excited for it if it was a Gershlauer or an Intamin or even an RMC, you know, T-Rex or, you know, Iron Horse, whatever, um, you know, whatever form they decided to do it in. I would be more excited out of the box if it was one of those. That being said, I do think there is tremendous potential uh, for this. I think the layout looks really, really good. I think it's all going to come down to how the how SNS executes this ride in terms of the ride being smooth, the ride being comfortable, and the ride being taken at the proper speed at which rides like Colossus and Smiler and Monster are all taken at 
to make those elements fun. The inversions like the stall inversion and the banana roll, which we've seen on a, on rides like Takabisha has a barrel has a banana roll. Um, Smiler also has something kind of similar to it. It's more of a cobra roll. Um, the banana roll, for those of you who aren't familiar with, if you look up Takabisha, it has one. It's kind of a cobra roll where the middle part doesn't go quite as far down and it almost stays level with the top of the loop so that it's more of a continuous element. It's similar to a cobra roll, but a little more continuous. Um, so there's potential for a lot of these elements to have good force and also good hang time, which is what you and I uh, really rave about Monster for. Um, if this ride was Gershlauer, I'd be very, you know, more confident that it's going to have things like that. With it being s and it's, it's st more of an unknown, but still tremendous potential for this ride to be very, very good. Well, and, and, you know, I, you know, I, coming off of, you know, last month I was just on Powder Keg and I know Powder Keg's a little bit different of a situation, but really that's the only s, &S coaster full circuit standard sit down, doesn't have a lot of loops though. Um, but that ride, and I know Premier was involved there too, so that changes things a little bit, but that ride is, is it was well designed, was well put together um is fairly smooth i think um for the most part uh and, and and i'm hoping the same for this because like you said i'm really excited about the layout i think the way that they do inversions is pretty interesting obviously it it, it was designed with the purpose of hitting the inversion record like that was there's no question about that here yeah that was the purpose of this um and and, and like you said i hope that i I'm a little worried about the trains because we haven't seen two across trains from s and s in quite some time right and and we're assuming that Gale Force was using you know the s and s um uh, vest restraints so similar to what's on the free flies is what Gale Force was kind of using in the four across pattern. This appears like it's going to be the two across there are a few renderings that show the trains and um, not very clearly they're but not clear it, they're they're almost like hazed out a little bit where maybe they're not certain what the trains are going to look like exactly yet. Um, but I think that's going to have a big part to do with this how you hit those inversions. And, and what types of restraints that you have. I'm, I'm almost certain we're going to have an OTSR here. I, yeah. I don't think they're going to go with just the lap bar, especially with the height. Even, even though I, I fully know OTSRs probably aren't needed, a lot of people want them, and that helps people get on the ride. Um, so I, I think with the height here, with the 220 and that 197, I think we're going to see OTSRs. And I'll say this, uh, the Joker restraints on the Joker free flies uh, – I, I have no problem with whatsoever. Um, I actually, uh, they're, they're okay. Um, I, I like them. I, I'm not in love with them. I don't mind them. Um, I, I think as far as OTS, OTSRs go, I like them. And, and I, I like them maybe a little bit better than the B&M ones because the B&M ones, it's hit or miss if they lock down on you or not. Yeah. Um, from ride to ride, not from, not from you know, cycle to cycle. Um, I, I think I think you get a little bit more play on the Joker ones, on the S and S ones. That 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 when they lock down, it's not like B and M that like really locks down on you um, yeah. if, they, if they staple you. I think the Joker ones are, are a little bit more forgiving. Um, the only thing I have to say is I don't like the prototype ones at Fiesta. I know you didn't even notice a difference, but the, the vests definitely were a difference to me there. But I think they fixed them on all the future ones. So hopefully. If they go that route, I, I don't think that's going to be an issue for me anyway. I, I think the look of the train, because um, Gale Force has a really ugly train, so hopefully they get rid yeah, of it. Yeah, Gale Force's train left a little bit to be desired. I mean, I thought it was comfortable enough. I thought it was fine. Um, that ride did shake quite a bit, but I rode it last year, not quite this year. Um, so I, I don't know. Um, I, I, again, it, it, just talking about the ride itself and the layout, I think the layout looks really cool. I think there's a lot of different elements. Um there's a lot of elements that we're not very familiar with. We've got a sea serpent type roll like Medusa out at Discovery Kingdom. We've got this banana roll. We've got this barrel roll into the first drop, which is like a dive loop. It's almost like what the wing coasters do uh, out of that first drop. And it's just 
200 feet high. Yeah. We've got a dive loop. We've got the stall. We've got a cutback towards the end. We have more of a traditional uh, zero G roll. We've got a few airtime hills thrown in there. So um, I think if those airtime hills are taken with enough speed and there is airtime there, and then you take some of those inversions with a slow enough speed to get some hang time out of them, then I think this ride has a lot of potential to be really great and one of the better uh, big looping coasters. I mean, uh, we were talking in one of our group chats today and we were talking about some of the rides, um, over in England, uh, that we rode, uh, and some of the rides over here. And the three rides that we brought up were Monster at Adventureland, Smiler at Alton Towers, and then Colossus at Thorpe Park. And those are three rides that a lot of us would put higher than most of your sit down looping coasters um like most of your floorless coasters and obviously your aero corkscrews and some of your schwarzkopf uh sit down loopers and uh maybe even some of your bnm sit downs uh you know like a hulk or a wildfire uh kumba i, th I think they go in the discussion with those better mm. rides like that so i think that's kind of the standard we're expecting from SNS here. And if SNS can execute this ride as well as Gershlauer executed Monster and Smiler and Intamin uh, executed uh, Colossus and some of its other big looping coasters and the way B&M has executed its multi-looping coasters over the years, like your Kumbas, your Wildfires, your Hulks, then I think you're really going to have something here. And this is going to be a ride that uh, is going to be in a lot of discussions for um, you know, being on some, uh, pretty high on some lists. Um, but again, there's that caveat and the unknown of, we don't know what the execution of this ride is going to be because it's SNS, a company that has very little to no experience with big rides like this. So I, I think it's time that I, that we get to what I think is the real home run of this announcement. And, and one that a lot of people, didn't expect to happen and one that um, I think still people are discounting is how important this is. And that is the partnership with the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers that, that this is the real home run here. Uh, me and uh, you and I had a conversation a, a few evenings ago uh, talking about the perception and the actual real numbers of theme parks seeming like they're a little bit down right now. And we tried to come up with a few reasons of, of why parks may or may not be doing well this season. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I think we both came to the conclusion, or at least I came to the conclusion of, that they need more people being drawn into the parks for other reasons. Um, you know, we, we talked about how Cedar Point's doing it with the Sports Force Park, trying to draw people into the park that may, may, may or may not have gone. I think the Steelers' partnership is a pretty big deal because it gives people that may or may not have even considered Kennywood, uh, big football fans, big Steelers fans, the opportunity to go in there and always experience their team. Because um, right now, Danny, this is the NFL offseason. This is going to be a place, hopefully, that if they really follow through on this partnership, that is going to be you know, linked with the Steelers and not just in name but also an action where you might see player signings. You might see, you obviously have the player ex or the, uh, the, the Steelers experience with the, with the throwing of the footballs and all the different activities you can do. I think this is the real home run here. And I also think it's going to modernize this park a little bit. Whereas the last time I went to Kennywood, it's a nice park. It's well-maintained. It's a traditional amusement park with no theme whatsoever. And this is going to, bring a little bit of the 21st century in and a partnership that is very much going to appeal to the locals, uh, number one, the Steelers fans, but also we saw in some of the chat rooms, a lot of people saying, oh, I can't wait to go to Kennywood and ride this ride wearing my Cincinnati Bengals jersey yeah. and my Cleveland Browns jersey. So in a way, this is almost going to make it kind of fun for the people who dislike the Steelers and are fans of other teams like the Ravens and the Patriots and the Bengals and God forbid the Cleveland Browns. Yeah. But, uh, but I mean, this is going to make it, you know, just a little bit more fun because 
you know, I, I know, you know, some of my buddies that I go to my, the hockey games with, they'll wear a hockey jersey or some, or something to, to a park, especially if they're going like Hershey or Dorney, they'll wear a Hershey Bears jersey too. Um, you know, just to kind of be that, like that, you know, the little snarky, you know, feeling there to wear the opposing team's jersey. But um, th- this will just give it a little bit of extra something for the locals and the people from traveling far away. And it's going to give a little bit of a different experience. It's maybe not quite what you would expect out of a theme park, but I don't know if I view this much different as like Silver Dollar City a few years ago, put in the Fireman's Landing or whatever that was largely a play area with a small drop tower. To me, this almost seems like an adult play area with a theme that a lot of people can relate to or a lot of people enjoy and you get the partnership you're probably going to sell some Steelers merchandise as well um you know I think there's money to be made there for sure I mean Steelers fans are some of the most diehard uh in the NFL I know a lot of them being from Pennsylvania myself and it, quite honestly I, I think it's gonna I think it's going to draw a lot of people to that part of the park and it's going to be something different for people to do to break up their day. And they're going to get to ride, hopefully, a really good roller coaster in the middle of it. And, you know, the other thing is, as you were saying that, it, it came to my mind, I think this is a really ingenious way to modernize the park a little bit, too. If you were not to have, let's assume for a second that they don't have this partnership. And mm-hmm. they just put this right in and you have this very modern area of the park. It's going to feel very different than the rest of the park. and almost it's going to be jarring to the sense of, well, why isn't the rest of the park like this too then? I think this way, by making it, by giving it this overall theme, that you make that, that transition a little bit easier, that, that you make that transition and people are going to be like, oh, this is the Steelers part of the park. And that's why it feels a little bit different than the rest of the park does. And I think that's yeah. a really interesting thing to do in a very ingenious way uh, of like you said, moving the park into the 21st century. Now, I guess we have to talk about it. I know me and you have very different opinions on this. Uh, what about the name of the ride, the Steel Curtain? Um, the name, it's one of those where I get it, but I don't like it. Um, it's not the worst name in the world. I get it. Um, I don't know. I, I, I Obviously, when I say I don't like the name, people are going to say, well, what do you suggest? And, you know, there's other things you can come up with if you want a steel themed. I mean, it's it's a steel ride. So anything that's steel something just kind of sounds weird. Um, you know, I think I think Rob Dole today was like, uh, you know, Steel Vengeance, worst ride name in history. Kennywood said, hold my beer. And <laughs> it did the steel curtain. Um, I get it because it, it's that bad. Like, I get it because it's a Steelers reference. So in, in the within the context, I think it's okay. By itself, be like, oh, I'm going to go ride Steel Curtain. Oh, it's, it's, it's absolutely. It's, Steel it's, Curtain's it's, a terrible name. It's a terrible name, but given the context, I understand it and I'm okay with it. And the logo is so so. The grady, the gradient uh, in the text, as far as the color, is a little strange because um, typically that's a big no no when it comes to logos. But I think the logo's cool. Um, uh, it, it, generally speaking, I, I, the whole bucket pouring the melted iron. Um, the the hockey team I played for growing up, the Bethlehem Blast, um, which the blast came from the name uh, the Blast Furnaces at the old Bethlehem Steel Factory. Um, and our logo was a silhouette of the blast furnace building with a bucket pouring, uh, melted iron onto the word mark, the Bethlehem blast. So it's, I, I'm very familiar with this, what this logo is doing. Um, so I like the idea. I thought it was cool when I wore it, uh, you know, for 10 years on the front of my Jersey. And, um, you know, I think, it, I think it's going to look cool. The sign looks really cool too. Uh, if they have a 3d type of sign, I think it's going to look really cool. Uh, and, I think there's potential if you put some really cool lights on this ride, it could look really cool at night as well. Um, the ride, the name by itself, I think is pretty bad. Uh, given the context, I'm okay with it. And I think the logo is, is better than, is, is, is pretty good. Um, so I, I think it's passable and I, I'm okay with it. Yeah. I, I, I'm not, I'm not opposed to, to most of it. Like you said, I, I think you put this in any other park and, and it just makes no sense, but you wouldn't do it if you put it in any other park that you have to have it tied to this, to this overall area. Um, I'm a little surprised because inside they have like the terrible tower 
and I've seen a few people say that that, that might have been a better name. I thought so myself too. That for the well, that that should be your drop tower. I mean, you took out Pitfall. You should put in a big drop tower and make this like have a couple rides in this area, and you could do that. It, it's it's a little surprising that they that, that they they put that inside the experience part of it. Um, I I don't know. I, I, I like it. I think it's going to look nice on t-shirts. I, I'm hoping for a big ride sign that maybe even have some like motion or animation. Yeah. Like maybe the bucket is like moving a little bit and maybe yeah, or, there's, or the, or the stuff coming out is like different colors and, and you see everything mixing together. Um, you know, it, it I, I think it's going to be good. I, I think, I think the Steelers tie into this is, is the win here is the big, I win. think that's what makes it all work together. Yeah, I, I, I really do. I think that's the ingenious part. And and sitting here today, I, I you know, sitting here yesterday, I should say, I don't think I expected that at all. I, I thought I expected a ride with, 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 with your standard theme park theme. Um, but I think that tying it in with the Steelers, and, and maybe this is, I, I think it's going to help the Steelers too, that, that we know the NFL is a, on a little bit of a slide. Uh, there's no discounting that. And I think yeah. having a theme park crowd and kids in this area and hooking people into the Steelers and making that part of your, of your park and, and, and getting it into other people's minds, I think that's a win for the NFL too. And I, and I would not be surprised that if this is successful, that we see this done other places too. Yeah, I mean, this I'm is what surprised it hasn't been. Well, you and I talked about the potential with Fury and would they have a tie-in with the Hornets, and they ended up not. But this is kind of what we were talking about, like the type of thing that they might do and have like a Hornets-themed area. Well, you know, people kind of laughed at us and said, ah, why would they do that? That's stupid. It's like, well, the Kennywood's doing a Steelers-themed area, and, yeah. you know, I guarantee you're going to see a lot of people wearing Steelers jerseys and other teams' jerseys at the park this summer. Yeah, and it's it's gonna draw in a whole bunch of new people. So I think overall my reaction, um, generally positive. Generally positive, with a hint of skepticism, as yeah. always. And and we were skeptical when when Steel Vengeance was released. Absolutely. Uh, we we've been skeptical. I I don't think I was skeptical when Fury's POV came out. Um, yeah, I, I mean, the, how silly do we look for being skeptical of rides like Fury and Steel Vengeance when they were first announced? But again, this goes back to what we talk about all the time, tempering expectations, finding things that may not be strong points of the ride, talking about those with the understanding that there is still tremendous potential. We were skeptical about, you know, Fury, like you said, we were skeptical about, uh, you know, lightning rod with the launch and whatnot. And, you know, that turned out to be just fine. The reliability's an issue there, but fine. Um, you know, we were skeptical about the shed with Mystic Timbers and you and I both enjoyed it. And, we, you know, we were skeptical about Steel Vengeance and, you know, that's turned out to be just fine as well. So uh, generally positive and generally pretty excited about this ride. Um, I will most definitely be getting there. Well, um, and, and, that's, and, that's the, and that's the thing about it is, is, you know, I had not planned to go to Kennywood uh, in 2019. And I'll be honest, Danny, I, I'm, I, I was just talking to my wife today. I said, you know what, maybe, maybe we do a Pennsylvania trip again and, and maybe hit up Kennywood. And that's specifically because this ride looks interesting. Um, interesting enough to make me consider going there next year. We're not a whole lot of rides, you know, unless I have a specific, you know, business interest there. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't tend to make it out to the new rides all the time. Um, you know, so, but Kennywood is a park that I had not planned to go back to, uh, you know, in the last, you know, in my thinking, but now I think because of this, I think it's a park that's high on my list of places I need to go. And that sells tickets. That's well, the difference. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, I would certainly be buying a day ticket or, you know, at least a discount ticket through, you know, ACE or whatever it is, uh, to go there for sure. So, um, you know, I, I will most likely be going as well. And, uh, you know, I haven't gone to Kennywood in a couple of years. I went a few years ago and uh, before that, uh, 2012 and 2016. So 2019 looks like a year that I'm going to have to get back to Kennywood. Um, so hopefully 
Uh, we don't have any issues with SNS in terms of the execution and getting this ride ready on time, yeah. uh, which we've seen in the hist- you know, in the past. Uh, but if uh, nothing goes wrong on that front, then I think we have a lot of look, a lot to look forward to. Uh, in 2019 in Steelers country uh, there at Kennywood with uh, the Steel Curtain. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited. I, so am I. So uh, uh, thanks uh, to, for all those following us on this journey. Hopefully you're as happy with this as, as we are, uh, maybe even happier. Uh, you know, hopefully that's the case. Yeah. Uh, so we, we thank you for joining us here on, on Coaster and Update for this whole journey. Um, and we've got a few more journeys left this season, Danny. Oh, we've got quite a few coming up, don't we? <laughs> So we are smack dab in the middle of announcement season here. Uh, Kenny Wood, first one out the gate. Uh, so as always, thank you for joining us here. I'm, of course, Andy Robarczyk from Chicago, Illinois. And Danny Miller from Binghamton, New York. <laughs> right on, Ride Warriors. <laughs> Get those terrible towels ready, guys. <laughs> Go Bears. <laughs> <laughs>